Hello everyone and welcome to part two of making my little micro or mosaic fabric collaged snail um, for my slow stitch snail um, piece. So I've started doing some stitching using this gorgeous Wonderfill razzle and it's very shiny and glistening and it's a variegated thread with a relatively rapid color change which is great for doing a sort of a small area where you want the colors to change quite quickly. So in yesterday's video, I talked about how I transferred the snail image and the writing onto um, the fabric. So I won't talk about that again and feel free to jump back to that video. Um, so I'm gonna jump across to the start of the S. And so I'm just doing little um, back stitches to create the, the, letter, the letters and just following where I drew them, unless I feel as I do it that I just need to slightly do a stitch slightly differently, which I did on the W just because it looked a little bit too close. So that one I just put a bit further, a bit further out. And keeping them quite close together, just so that they do sort of form the curves that you want around the, the letters. And then at the end, I'll be able to give it a quick either iron or hair dry. I'll probably iron it because it does have a few crinkles. Um, and that will remove any of the residual black um, pen because I'm using the friction marker, which erases when it has heat applied to it, which is super. But it does make it a lot easier having writing um, that you can follow rather than having to think up as you go where your where your needle needs to go. Now with this Wonderfill thread, it does tend to have a tendency to sort of unravel. And so I try and work in just little smaller lengths of it um, so that it doesn't kind of un unwind. But if it does unravel, you can then use the individual threads as well. But it's super pretty, so I'm very happy to be using it on this piece that's going to be hanging on my craft room studio door. So you can see there the green's already transitioned to the, the pinky colour. Slightly bobbly that piece there, I'll just see if I can. I think it's okay though. Yeah, flattened it down a bit. We're just giving it a little pull. So I hope you're all having a good day. I just managed to undo that stitch. Um, hope you're having a good day or a good evening when you're watching this. We've just come back from the dog park. So I'm actually filming this on Saturday, but I won't um, upload it until for tomorrow. So I just left my snail um, about to um, sort of dry for about an hour or so. You probably wouldn't even need that long, but it just means that it gives the Yoohoo just enough time to sort of set, which means your needle won't get all claggy sort of going, going through it. But it certainly made it an easy way to get those tiny little fabric triangles and shapes down onto the onto the fabric and then we'll be doing stitches over so I've got a bit of a plan for how I'll do that so we'll get to that in due course so I thought you wouldn't want to watch me um, stitch all the letters so I thought I'll just do the, the snail snail part that will be enough um, enough stitching to watch I think So you could also couch down a thread and that's where you hold the thread and then you do little stitches over each side of the, the thread to hold it hold it in place. But I really wanted to use this, this Wonderfill thread and do the, do the back stitch. This 
It's been a beautiful day here. Blue skies after a very, very um, foggy morning. But a beautiful um, evening down at the park. A lot of dogs down there on the weekend too. Sometimes it can be a bit patchy on, on weeknights, although Thursday and Friday nights tend to get really busy. So many ca more cars than there are sort of um, yeah, designated car spaces. People tend to just park up on the grass, not actually in the dog park, just in a surrounding sort of area. Are you going to be taking part or are you already taking part in this collaboration, this Inspired by Art collab? My first time doing one of one of these with, um, with Annie and the other collaborators. I'm not one of the formal organisers. I'm just, yeah, heard about it and thought, hey, I will join in, seeing it's an open, open, free for anyone to join collab. Always nice to have a prompt from someone else and just have that chance to think about, oh, what am I going to create? Originally, I was thinking maybe like a, um, a sort of a Mary Poppins silhouette, but I thought, no, not really a not really a Mary Poppins sort. What am I? I'm a, a very happy slow stitcher. And so what's the symbol of slow? Like the whole slow food movement was the snail. So I thought, yeah, that's that's pretty fitting, I reckon. A slow stitch snail. And snails leave that little little path, in this case quite a colourful, colourful little path. I'm just gonna straighten out the fabric because I've pulled it a smidge. I'll soon just need to tie off the needle. Um, because I'm running out of thread. So I might just finish. I think I might finish there. Might even just go up and finish, give the eye dot another little little dot. Good. So then I'll just tie it. Tie it off. Like that, and then I will slip through. And as I say, I keep these little ends, I'll put them in my little jar of fabric scraps and thread scraps. Oops, sorry, I'll get that back on screen, and we'll get a bit more because we're going to need it for the twirls anyway. But again, I just don't cut too much off just to avoid it getting difficult to, to work with. I'll come back on. It's a very tiny needle eye. I'm kind of amazed that I managed to get it threaded the first time there. Doesn't often seem to happen when I'm making videos. Okay. So I'm just gonna pop up where we where we were. I just love how colourful this piece is, just really enjoying the, the colours. Which is fitting because I really like using, I don't have a single colour palette that I use. I like to really mix it up, both my techniques and, and the colours of the pieces that I work in. I think that's what I enjoy about um, textile arts and slow stitch um, is it there's just so many scope for so many different styles and interpretations and combinations you can kind of discover and create your own as well and there is no right there's no wrong it's just what pleases you 
and you can just experiment. So today was very much experimenting. It was sort of inspired by some other people I've seen doing some other things, but it's taking that idea and then really playing with it and experimenting. And sometimes those experiments won't work and they probably, if they totally didn't work and there was nothing to learn from them, probably wouldn't end up making a video about it. But if there's something to learn from it, um, or those nice times when it does come out either as well or even better than you were hoping for, then yeah, definitely love sharing, sharing that. So I have so many ideas for projects and I'm going to keep, keep powering, powering along in my slow stitch style um, to, yeah, to keep, keep exploring and creating. So be sure to, um, to click the subscribe button so you do get a notification um, when I post a, a new video. So I'm managing to get them up every couple of days at the moment. Because I think I've just got yeah so many so many ideas on the go. Made some lovely little Mother's Day brooches which I'll be gifting gifting to my mum and my partner's mum. Ouch. So yeah, there's a video on those. That was like less than an hour, even with me nattering away, less than an hour to. Um, to make to make those and they have a painting with thread decoration on them where you follow the fabric design but then add yeah your own sort of color interpretation and stitches to sort of shade out the the area stitch up to where the tail is and then I might well I yeah and no, I think I can then jump up and start to do the outside of our snail so I think I'll just do that in the back stitch as well I was losing my end, but there's enough of an end still in there. So yeah, I have um, drawn, back drawn the design on top of where I've done my fabric collaging of where I want the shell swirl to, to go, just so I've got something to follow when I'm stitching. might even do a second line we'll see how we go we'll probably do the other stitching over the fabric first and then if I feel I need to do a second sort of line or maybe an over stitching around the outside we can do that see how it goes it looks so I'll just use this thread up and then we might do some of the over stitching of the, the fabric and then I've got the, an idea for the other side of this, because this is going to be a double-sided sign, one for my crafting persona, which is slow stitch snail. And then I think I'll do my working persona, because that's the other activity that sometimes happens. Well, during the working week, it happens in this room when I am work from home, which is most of the time. Um, and so, yeah, I've got an idea for that character. And that will also have that um, beautiful little bit of cross stitch embroidery that was already on this piece of vintage, vintage linen. So I like that it's going to have that sort of common border around it. It's going to be using the whole piece and I'll have that lovely, lovely piece of embroidery to include. I like how um, my craft projects just sort of evolve as I go through the process of sitting here and, and stitching. 
um, probably more so when I'm just kind of quietly stitching but even when I'm on video my mind's sort of yeah thinking thinking about what next and you kind of find things emerge that wouldn't emerge if you just sat there and were kind of trying to plan it out I find my yeah my projects are very very emergent Just following around the outside. Really happy with how the um, that tapestry sort of style upholstery fabric has worked out as well for my snail. I'm kind of glad my other one was a bit too thick because otherwise I wouldn't have sort of had a look through my scrap bag and rediscovered this piece, which I think I'd last used on a, a Roxy Journal of Stitchery, um, one of the Christmas journal pieces. Pretty sure I recognise it from that. I do like how, yeah, the different fabrics all have little memories associated with them. Like when I was doing the the micro squares, I yeah saw one of the bits of fabric where was a scrap from um, when I was creating the the gift package for Leanne. So I think at this point I will just um, tie it off at the back. So as you can see, I've got lots of different metallic threads, but what I'm thinking I would like to use is, I've actually got two of them, including one of them that's um, already open. So I'm going to use this one, which is like a multi, multi-colour metallic. And so what I want to now do is I was thinking I could do the sort of the curvy lines that you get on a snail, but I'm thinking I might just dart around and make sure all the bits are stitched just in more random random glistening stitches so that's what I'm thinking we'll see how we go sometimes these metallic threads are a little bit annoying to work with but we'll see how see how this one is so I'll just start down and we'll just see what happens if I just oops it popped through my knee my um, first I won't pull too much and I'm sure it will hold and I'll just make sure I go under and Yeah, I think I'll just do little seed stitches rather than trying to put a, a sort of a shell pattern on per se. I think it'll be nice just to have the little glistening bits with the triangle sort of mosaic design. Oops. I've just unthreaded my needle. Always going to happen in my videos. Oops. So I'm just going to try and catch each, each of the sort of corners and sides of each piece as I go around. And that will just hold everything nice and nice and secure. I'm just going to make sure I don't have a knot at the back. That's my hair at the back, not the, not the thread. My hair is not metallic. I saw someone today with hair that looked rainbow coloured on the street. Good on them, I say. Have fun here. Have things that make you happy. I've been growing my hair right out. I haven't actually been to the hairdresser in a ridiculous amount of time, including I let my fringe completely grow out. I've been lucky a few times to have my hair cut by this amazing um, hairdresser. This sounds very fancy. I'm not one of the, I'm not a high maintenance sort of um, gal, but I happened um, to get a recommendation for a lady in Paris um, who is a hairdresser, but she's actually a sculptress by trade. Her name's Sylvie Coudre and she operates both out of Paris but as far as I know and I haven't been back to Paris in a few years now so I haven't seen her for a while. Um, she had moved to Belgium but she was still coming to Paris and um, running her salon just from a an apartment but a really just gorgeous old apartment um, where she would come a few days a week and cut people's hair. But yeah she started out her life as an artist and as a sculptor um, and then one time she did an exhibition where she was um, cutting sort of hair as part of it. 
And then through that contact, I believe, she um, was sort of got into the fashion industry um, and started cut cutting hair in that industry. And from that then became a hairdresser. But she's got a really interesting approach where she cuts your hair. You don't go in there and say, oh, I'd like a haircut that looks like this and take your magazine along or a picture along. You go in there and she cuts your hair to what actually suits your proportions and your structure and so she'll look at things like the size of your forehead um, and the proportion that you need to be of the visually pleasing proportion and that's where the fringe comes into play um, she looks at your cheekbones she looks at um, your shoulders do they slant are they straight across um, and ultimately, she cuts you a haircut that makes your neck look long, um, your forehead look in proportion, your face look sort of just the right amount of roundness and slenderness and cheekbones sort of appropriately um, highlighted. It is absolutely fascinating. And she is the most um, yeah, generous soul because she'll kind of talk you through it all as she is doing it. Um, the first time I was a little bit terrified. I thought, oh my gosh, what sort of haircut might I walk away with but because I'm not um yeah I'm not someone that's like super super engaged in how I look um I was yeah it was just the experience of it um Alex my partner has been lucky enough to be to go to her um once yeah actually he's been in Paris twice with me when I've been there but I think the first yeah the first time he didn't come along um and there's still a funny story that makes Alex and I laugh um that first time Alex and I had been out wandering the streets as I do in Paris. You just wander. You would definitely wear out your your shoes and your feet. Um, and so it got to the afternoon when I was going to be having my appointment and Alex, sorry, I've just created a knot here, which yes. isn't um, good. Alex had gone waiting. home to the, well, gone to the apartment and we've been lucky to, ever since I started going to Paris, um, I'll tell you about the apartment maybe <laughs> separately so I don't totally sidetrack side this story. Anyway, an apartment that we have been staying in I've been staying in for many times and Alex has stayed in um, a good number of times as well. Um, and so Alex had gone back to the apartment to have a bath and have a rest and I think have a beer in the bath. Anyway, I headed off to Sylvie Coudre and went for my appointment and I was um, telling her that, yeah, where we'd been that day and then telling her that, sorry, I'm still trying to tie this off, telling her that Alex had, yeah, headed back and she goes, oh my gosh, I love that. Your lover is at home having a bath. <laughs> it's, it still makes me laugh. I don't, I don't even know why it's so funny, but it's just, yeah, it was just the, the, the cutest and most adorable little thing that she said, and she was just so charmed by the, the image of, well, I don't know, not the total image, I hope, but by the image of, yeah, Alex, um, yeah, taking an afternoon, an afternoon bath. And so, yeah, I told Alex when I got home and we both just laughed and I still sometimes say that. I love it, your lover. And I, the way they call him a lover, like she explained to me the, the first time when I was talking about Alex, she, I said, oh, yeah, he's, he's my partner. And she goes, no, no, he, he's not your partner. Partner is business. He is your lover. <laughs> so he's my lover. I've taken a lover. So I like that. I like having a lover. And then this afternoon, I was also watching some videos, um, a video from Leanne with beautiful Sashiko um, work on that. Sorry, I was just off camera tying a knot. So we'll keep going. I won't totally bore you, I don't think, with doing um, this stitching. I'll probably do it, do some of it off camera. But let's try and get the bulk of the... Let's get a bit of stitching done. And yeah, as I was, um, I think as I was starting to say, but totally got sidetracked, um, Alex has been lucky enough to have his hair cut by Sylvie as well. And I really enjoyed that because I got to fully watch it and sort of um, fully absorb at all angles what she was doing. And now I actually cut Alex's hair myself because he's got curly hair and the way she taught me to do it, it's sort of foolproof and it's a far better cut than he gets from barbers here in Melbourne he had once had got the most horrendous haircut it was a fully fledged mullet now if you if you're going to the hairdresser for a mullet that's okay if you come out with a mullet but if you don't go to the hairdresser to get a mullet haircut and you come out with that it's a 
a little bit horrifying. Even his mum went, oh my gosh, what have they done to you? Apparently, I think that time he had an apprentice hairdresser that I think after he'd done the haircut said, oh yeah, you're my, you're the first haircut I've done. So that was a bit worrying. You would have thought they would have actually done some haircuts in in college, although maybe he had started his apprenticeship and not actually done any any classes yet. Who knows? Which reminds me, I do need to give Alex another another trim. And I used to maintain my fringe as well, the way she taught me to to do that in between. Obviously, in between because we weren't weren't in Paris that that often. We were pretty frequent visitors to Paris, but. Um, not frequent enough to be having the regular haircuts there. And then I sort of got my hairdresser in Melbourne just to maintain the way she shaped the hair around the face. But now I've got a very long hair um, ponytail that sort of goes most of the way down my back. So it has grown right out. I've lost my fringe, but based on her, the way my proportions and my face and my shoulders, etc., I should be having a, a different haircut. But alas, just haven't haven't done that since COVID times actually. And I'd much rather spend my time in my craft room stitching on a weekend than sitting in a chair at a at a hairdresser. I know some people love the sort of the, that pampering experience, but for me it's yeah, it's what it is with Sylvie it's different because yeah you're in an amazing environment and she's just such a lovely such a lovely cheery fun lady she's she's gorgeous so I hope she's going well happy I'm doing these little stitches around um, the pieces apart from the fact I keep unthreading my needle because I think it's just giving them just a really lovely um, outlining effect. But I'll just finish off this bit of thread. And then we might do the stitching um, to form the shape of the shell. And I can then finish doing these stitches um, after that. So the apartment I stay um, at in Paris is um, I'm so lucky on my very first trip to Paris so, so many years ago now. Um, I yeah, rented an apartment from Sandy and Philippe, who over the years have become incredibly dear friends. And I actually am so, I'm so sad that I haven't seen them in the last few years because of everything, sort of all the travel stopping um, due to the pandemic. Um, but it's uh, the cutest little apartment in the Latin Quarter, um, which is a more students' quarter, so it's near the Sorbonne University, um, and it's just the most lovely, sweetest little apartment. The kitchen is tiny, it's one person in it, um, but the way Sandy has decked out the apartment is incredible in that she was originally actually furnishing it to be the apartment for herself and Philip um, to move into together. Um, but then they ended up moving into Philippe's, um, oops, that bit's just come unstuck and come off. So let's see if I can just I'll pop up and then I'll pop through the fabric. It's okay. And we'll stitch it down that way. Oops. Slightly caught. There we go. 
not sure quite, quite what way it's going to stitch down, but we'll work something out. There we go. It's the only one that's popped off so far. That must be a non, it's more fibrous fabric, so that might be why. So yeah, she decked out the apartment with all these amazing vintage and antique um, finds from the Paris um, markets. So it's got just got the most beautiful furniture. Um, it's got one main room, which um, during the day um, has a sofa in it. And then at night time, you fold the sofa into a bed, but they've got the most comfortable mattress. That's the one thing she prides herself, um, that she got the most comfortable um, yeah, fold out bed mattressy thing. Um, because those fold out sofa beds can sometimes be very uncomfortable, but it's a very quintessential Paris apartment thing. A lot of um, people, that's how they yeah have their their bed. So it's a couch during the day and a fold out um, bed at night. And then this apartment looks over a um, little cute courtyard, which a lot of the apartments do, an internal courtyard. Um, and it's yeah, an upstairs apartment, so up one flight of stairs. Thankfully not a huge number, um, because a lot of them yeah, do have a lot of stairs. And it is near a famous open-air market um, street, so Rue Mouffetard. Um, and they have the most wonderful um, open-air market with just beautiful fresh foods and wines, rotisserie, um, chickens, um, cooking in the sort of in the open air with the juices from the chicken um, marinating um, the roasting potatoes underneath I always, that's always the first meal when we're when we're there pick up some of those in the market come back with some crusty bear, bread some beautiful cheese and some fresh berries because normally we've been in in Paris in in the springtime often the white asparagus as well which is absolutely prized over there which they actually um, grow by mounding up the dirt around it so that it doesn't turn green through the exposure to, to light. So it stays white. And big juicy spears of that. So I think I'll just, I've still got a bit, um, I'll just catch a few more pieces, maybe this one over here. And then yeah, I can come back and put in some more stitches where I think they're they're needed, but also just to be that decorative element because they just look so nice glistening away there. Really gives that sort of that patchworky effect. So a lot of fun this piece wasn't expecting to um, love it as much so I'm happy it is something that um, sums me up and that I really like the look of too and as you can see it's no problem to be sewing through the um, the yoohoo glue it hasn't made a hard surface to to sew through and so the apartment also has a little um, side room where you can keep your bags and it's got a bookshelf and um, has the computer and the router and things and a cupboard and the apartment's amazing it just comes with everything you could possibly need and sandy always um fits it out so you've got a beautiful bunch of flowers when you get there um and there's always pa pastries or cakes in the fridge and juices and she's quite offended <laughs> if you don't actually um yeah use all the things that she's um left for you she's like christine why, why didn't you use it the first time I there, I don't know. I just sort of felt didn't feel guilty, but just thought, no, I don't need, I don't need all of this. I can. And she's like, oh, Christine, why didn't you use all the the cereals in the cupboard and the pasta? At least so that yeah, she's got it so decked out that even if you didn't go out to the shops, probably for a few days, um, you you wouldn't be wanting for anything. Chocolates in a little jar in the living room, um, a bottle of wine. She's the most generous, lovely, lovely lady, and so yeah. On past visits, we've always spent time when I've been there by myself because, yeah, I was going to Paris for a good number of years before I met Alex. Um, yeah, Sandy and I would go to the consignment stores and to the markets. Um, Taken us to amazing jazz um, bars where 
um, the jazzy sort of like behind a, a door like um, they it's a, it looks like just a normal sort of dingy bar but then they open up like a back room door and there's an amazing um, jazz performance um, to dancing down on the sen just with locals coming together to dance even in the local um, open air market on Rue Mufatad um, when it's the close of um, market on a Sunday um, local musicians come out and play their accordions um, and locals dance I've got some just most beautiful pictures that I did in black and white um, of dancing in the market including a lady and a man all decked out in sort of more traditional well not traditional um sort of old style vintage dress um, and dancing with the accordion player in the background I've actually got some of them on my red bubble um, artist um, photography site so if you're interested I can post a post a link to that below haven't uploaded anything to that for quite a while so we're just doing the swirl where I draw on the lines so my recording did something strange and it came up with a strange sound and just suddenly went off and then it wouldn't even show me the video so I thought I had actually lost everything so I then proceeded to just keep um, stitching while I waited to see what happened and then I went off and had dinner and when I came back the recording was shown but um, it had obviously cut off before I actually got to the ending so I just want to update you on the further stitching I did um, I finished doing the swirls around the snail and went right down around um, the shell and I finished doing all the little stitches on the snail um, which hold all the little bits of the patchwork or the collage or the mosaic fabric pieces together so that's yeah using this really lovely um, variegated metallic thread but it's not a metallic that unwinds itself which is good and I did on my um, bigger thread I did end up using a bigger thicker um, stronger needle which just went through much much better than the small needle I was using um, so I recommend doing that and I think because it helps it just um, reduces the drag on the thread the bigger threads because it's making a bigger hole that that can pass through and not create the drag so just wanted to show you Mr. Snail. The only thing left that I might do is just go around the edge of this um, and just put some tiny little stitches just to make sure it it holds perfectly well. But I think it, I don't think it is going to fray um, sort of any any further than it is because it's got that stabilizing fabric on it. So there we go. That's my slow stitch snail. So he's going to look lovely. And I've got now an idea, which um, you'll have to come back for another video. Well, you don't have to. I'd love if you did, though, um, which I will need to record and plan out. But I'm going to do the back side um, of this and do this for my working day personality or character. I look forward to chatting to you soon.